All right. Well, praise the Lord Jesus who has given us everything we need tonight for our beer battered, deep fried ground venison steaks. So you start with ground venison and you need to help it stick together. Uh, ground venison just does, does, doesn't stick together for like hamburger type stuff as well as ground beef. So we're going to add some breadcrumbs. You can use the Italian kind if you prefer, or you can use this other kind. If you don't have any on hand, just crush up some saltine crackers or some oyster crackers, uh, whatever you have. So you want to go with about two tablespoons of your breadcrumbs per pound of ground beef to start with, or ground venison to start with. And you want to mix it in really good. There is a redeemer, Jesus, God's own son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. And what you'll notice is that if your ground venison kind of retains a, a more moisture than usual, you might need to add a third or sometimes even a fourth tablespoon per pound. But for starters, one tablespoon per pound is plenty. All right, that's still a little on the soft side. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the third tablespoon. All right, so you can make your, your deer, ground deer steaks as big or as small as you want. I kind of like them in the half pound range. A uh, couple reasons on that. I like my burgers medium rare, and it's easier uh, to keep a larger burger medium rare. You go for that quarter, thin quarter pound stuff, two things gonna happen. It's going to get cooked medium or medium well really fast. The other thing that's going to happen is it's going to be a little harder to hold together uh, in the fryer. If you want smaller servings, like more like a quarter pound serving, you might want to shape it more like meatballs. Okay, I think I'm going to go for the fourth tablespoon. I'm uh, losing confidence a little bit that those patties are going to hold together with only three tablespoons. Of All right, at the end of the video, I'll show uh, how we made the beer batter in the first place. But let's go ahead and keep things moving forward. You only want to put one burger at a time because this is a half pound, and that's only a quart of oil. If you try and cook them both, you'll both have a stick together problem. You'll also have uh, an issue that your oil is going to cool off too much. All right, going in at 5.08. We're gonna have a close look at that at 5.11. I know three minutes for a burger doesn't seem like a lot, uh, but the oil is real hot, and keep in mind, I like it medium rare. All right, let's talk briefly about the fry oil while that's cooking. Uh, we're moving over to cottonseed oil. It's got a high uh, smoke point. Works real well with the beer batter. There probably still is a little bit of uh, leftover peanut oil because we add some extra heat uh, with our hot red pepper peanut oil. Got a video out there showing how to make that. Uh, and we've got about maybe 25% uh, duck fat in there as well. Really, really make it taste great. All right, 511. But we don't really go by the clock so much. We're gonna have a look and see how golden brown we are. Yeah, that's, that's about ready. Let me go ahead and get that one out. Really, you don't wanna overcook venison. Venison is not nearly as marvelous if you cook it beyond the stage of done, uh, where you really like it, and keep in mind, like all foods, right? You take a bite, 
a little less done than you like, you throw it back on the heat or into the microwave or something. If you uh, if you overcook it, kind of hard to back up. Oh, I think we nailed the medium rare. That really is marvelous. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So that was like three minutes for medium rare. I'd guess four minutes for medium. Probably the full six minutes if you really like your, your you know, your ground venison steaks well done. But it's very good. Oh, thank Okay, you. so for the beer batter, we've got one cup of all-purpose flour. We've got two tablespoons of cornstarch. And we've got one half teaspoon of baking powder. And the goal when you're adding the beer is you're aiming for the consistency of pancake batter. And it's okay if it has a few lumps. You don't want to beat it to death because that you lose some of the advantages of the beer, the light flakiness. If you beat it too much, uh, it kind of goes flat and you lose you know, the, uh, the carbonation that really makes uh, beer batter stuff special. Now over time, uh, we've learned that my family kind of prefers a little lighter breading. So this might uh, be a pancake batter that would make uh, kind of pancakes on the thinner side, uh, just because we don't like the breading so thick on our dishes. Uh, but if you like the breading a little thicker, uh, you'd make it pancake batter so your pancakes would end up on the Take another look in the good, good book. Don't let it pass you by. Let the Holy Spirit talk. Walk through the written word of Jesus. Take another look in the